guys, I'm Cody with the Damn Fishing Addicts, and on today's video, we're going to cover snagging bags. This is my personal snagging bag, and we're going to go through it, and I'm going to show you what all I keep in my snagging bag. If you see something you think I need or something you think I should have in it, let me know down in the comments. I know a lot of people have crappie bags, they have bass bags, or they just have a general all-around tackle box. Um, when I'm snagging, I'm, this, I'm just there to snag, so I don't want to carry a bunch of extra weight with me that I don't need. So that's what made me create this snagging bag so like i said if you see something you think i should have let me know in the comments um we'll dig right into this thing over here on the side pocket i have a pair of cutters for cutting line you'll get snagged up on a lot of other people's lines especially the later it gets in the season and sometimes it's just easier to cut it off than try and untie it and everything like that um uh, multi-tool these come in real handy you never know when you might need to work on a reel you not, might need to tighten a reel handle up or you know maybe you need to clean some sand out or who knows what but the, these things will come in real handy and they're just a good thing to have around it may not even be fishing it may need you go to leave and your truck won't start or something so a multi-tool is always good to have around um, this side over here I have fishing line. This is just some extra Power Pro 100 pound. There's not enough there to spool a uh, reel, but if I wanted to make a leader or I needed anything like that, I have it. Inside, in this little mesh pouch, I keep a stringer. We don't ever keep any of the spoonbill, but sometimes there's people that come down. Maybe it was the first time they weren't expecting to catch a fish. They get one, they decide to keep it, but they got some friends or whatever still fishing. They need a stringer to keep it in the water, to keep it alive. I got a stringer that they can use until they decide to leave. Duct tape. Again, I don't know how many people I see come down there and they don't realize when you catch a spoonbill in Oklahoma, you have to tag it. And the best way to tag it is just duct tape. Wrap some duct tape around the bill, write your name and all your information on it, and you're good to go. So duct tape is really great to have. I usually have a Sharpie in here. It's not in here right now because I loaned it out to a guy and I never got it back. So I'm going to have to put a new one in there. Um, tape measure. This is just a sewing tape measure, soft tape measure, three foot. Um, we're going to start measuring a lot of our fish and then keep. I'm going to keep a little notepad where we're going to measure them and weigh them. That way, maybe one day we break the scale or we forget the scale. We can measure one and we can be like, it should be around that much. You know, yeah, it's still a guess. It's not something you could certify for a state record or nothing. But if we catch a state record, the uh, biologists in the game weren't going to weigh it anyway. So it won't matter what our scale says. Of course, a scale, as we were just talking about, this is just a cheap Walmart, or not Walmart, but a cheap uh 112 pound scale i think it was like 10 bucks i looked at walmart for a lot of scales but it seems like our local area the biggest the scales go to is like 50 pounds i found one that went to 90 but we used it uh before and it didn't last very long especially weighing them big fish so i was hoping this little spring scale would last longer well time will tell um I do plan on trying to find a bigger scale that'll go in here, but for right now, this one's working just fine. We've actually, I've got a buddy that has digital scales. We have weighed fish with this and then weighed fish with his digital scales, and this one's been pretty much right on. Next up, we got the gloves. I always keep gloves in my snagging bag. They come in real handy. When you're snagging a lot and you're spending like a whole day snagging, you're casting over and over and over, your finger will start to get sore, especially if you're throwing braid. It can even cut you. Um, I just keep the pointer finger and middle finger covered. I don't worry about the rest. I just cut off the rest. It's mainly, it's just a personal comfort thing or whatever you want to call it. Um, these are the mechanic gloves. They're great gloves. They uh, dry out real quick. They're lightweight. They don't get your hands all hot and nasty and sweaty. So I really like those. Um, next up, we got the files. I always keep some files in my bag. This is just a Harbor Freight file. I think it was like three bucks. Um, this is actually a better one that I got at a bait shop. I like it because it's a lot smaller. Get in there on them hooks to sharpen them up. When you're down there fishing, you're going to hit the bottom. You're going to hit rocks. You're going to hit sand. You're going to hit things like that. You're going to dull hooks. And a dull hook is not going to penetrate a fish as deep. Therefore, you could have a lot of hook pulls. You could have um, a lot of hook fallouts, things like that. So keeping your hooks sharp, 
will make sure that you get a lot more hookups and a lot less drops. Um, in the middle, now this used to be a duck blind bag, like I was saying, and it had this little divider. But my weight guy that I buy weights from, he delivers my weights in these um, peanut, planer's peanut jars or jugs or however, whatever you want to call them. They fit perfectly side by side right down in here, as you can see. And I'm able to put weights on one side and hooks on the other. That comes in real handy when the fishing's hot and you're just trying to get back in there. You don't want to spend a lot of time fumbling around for hooks you know weights opening little packages and things like that that comes in real handy you just come in here grab a weight come right in here and grab a hook get tied on you're ready to go i really like the way those fit up here in the front this is our weight rope for weighing the fish obviously um it's just tied a knot a loop in one end tie a loop in the other end and then tied one in the middle, one goes around the bill, one goes around the tail, pull them up from the middle, get a good accurate weight, the fish ain't flopping around. I see a lot of people try and weigh fish by punching a hole in the jaw or trying to hook them through the gills and things like that. And the problem with that is when you start getting into them bigger fish, those 30, 40, 50, 60 pound fish, you're taking a chance every time you do that with breaking that that fish's jaw or or something like that. I've seen fish a few times where they've hooked them through the jaw, punched it through the skin and right underneath the jawbone and broke it, just ripped it straight out. And then I've even seen a guy, he went to hook his underneath the gill flap. He ended up hooking around one of the gills and when he lifted up, he ripped that gill away. There's a ton of blood vessels in them gills it bled that fish out really quick. Fish died. He ended up having to keep it. So that's why we use the rope. It's a less chance of damaging the fish. Pretty much there's no chance of damaging the fish. Um, we can make sure it gets returned back to the water just the way we pulled it in. Um, I have some pliers in here. I had these pliers in here before I had the multi-tool. I actually kind of stole the multi-tool from my son. And these pliers, I had these pliers in here before that. So I just haven't taken them out. But you never know, again, these are just one of them things, if you have to tighten up a reel or something like that, they could come in handy. You go to get in your truck and the truck won't start or something like that, and you tighten up battery cable, pliers come in handy. Yes, I've done that. <laughs> I've had that happen, that was from experience. So anyway, that's my snagging bag. That's what all I have in mind. If you see something you think I should add to it, if you have something in yours you think I need, let me know. I'm always looking to add to it. Like I said, I want to eventually make it to where I have absolutely everything you could ever need for snagging um, other than a rod and a reel in here. So I think that's where we'll end this video. Thank you all for watching. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and hopefully we'll see you at the dam. <laughs>